in this day and age of college football with everybody hyper-focused on the playoff and as soon as a season comes unraveled or even for some teams, there's just a loss or two, you know, we tend to discard like even Oregon, who one week ago, they're in the thick of the playoff race. They've got a shot and then all of a sudden they lose a the game. And yes, they will not make the playoffs. They're done. But it's we've there's this overall mentality across Cali Football Nation that just why watch the games? Why why even just focus on the playoff teams? Um, and I think it's hurt games like this. Um, and I hope that there's still fervor in this state of Oklahoma about this game. And I know that adding to that, of course, Oklahoma is leaving the conference, but uh, you know, we're looking at one of the great rivalries in college football. And when it comes to rivalry weekend, you know, I get um, geeked up for all these games and I don't care if Florida's five and five and Florida state's four and six or whatever. Uh, I try to watch as many of them as possible because it just brings back memories of, of mm-hmm. tradition and, and, this is what it's all about when it comes to college football or these kind of great rivalries. And so I'm hoping you're, you're right in the middle of it. You're close to the situation in regards to the, the pulse of these two fan bases and the, the vibe in the state of Oklahoma. Do people still care to a great degree who wins this game, regardless of what the records are or where it's going to take them? Yeah, it's 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 hard to say, Mark. The 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 fan base, I I feel, and certainly interested in the comments that could come from this here. But um, I feel like the fan base is as is as frustrated um, as it's as it's been in a long time. Um, Oklahoma hasn't had a season like this in a long time. Granted, they've had seasons where um, they they've they've lost. Uh, you know, three or four games, but I don't think that Oklahoma's had a season like this where they've, you know, been blown out in a few games and just, I think, really kind of underachieved at the level that they, that the expectations were. And then I think we all agree that the expectations probably were um, compete for a Big 12 championship. And that was probably the extent of what this team um, was capable of. But the fact that you know, here we are on November 16th and we're talking about a team that needs one more win to get bowl eligible. I think there's some, there's some frustration there. I don't think that there's frustration in the level that, okay, something needs to happen with, you know, with, with the head coach granted, you know, our Oklahoma's um, biggest rivalry um, rival, I should say, Texas went through the same thing last year, right. At, At five and seven. And, you know, they're they're not um, they're not incredibly better than they were last year, but you know Oklahoma has not if if they end up losing these last two games they haven't went through anything like this or or fought for a, for a bowl game so I think it's a little bit uncharted territory because um, a lot of a lot of people now they don't remember the the Blake years they don't remember you know what what happened during Schnellenberger's year. They call it his, his reign of terror um, around here um, in Oklahoma. So I, a lot of the, the fans that are, you know, at the age that they're supporting, a, there's a decent amount of them that certainly have um, – are used to winning and, and winning in, in a big way. And then when you have a season like this, it can be very – uh, deflating um and, and not only that mark but i think it's the the writings on the wall that this could be something that takes a little bit longer to kind of get righted um versus you know the i think the thought coming into the season was this team could probably compete for a big 12 championship and then maybe be in a position next year you know to to have you know to have that playoff um, competition but you know i think that probably a year or two away from from that but but I think this this game always brings out a lot of pride. I think this game always brings out a lot of excitement. Depend to your point, no matter what the record is, I think if I think there's a couple of things that I think help for for this weekend. I think the night game helps um, being a six thirty p.m. ABC game. I think locally, I mean, I think that helps um, get people a little bit more energized. The opportunity to 
to go and tailgate all day and, you know, and things like that, just the normal fan experience that they have. Um, and number two, this is a very, very big recruiting weekend for Oklahoma. Um, DJ Hicks is scheduled to be here um, on his official visits. Uh, Peyton Bowen and his brother Eli Bowen are supposed to be here. There's some other people. David Stone, who's a 2024 kid, um, is scheduled to be here. So this will be a, um, like I said, this will be a fairly significant. So I think it's very important from a when I when I think from a fan base perspective, if you're frustrated, if you're upset, then I mean this is the perfect time to to support because you know recruits see that see those things. So if you, if the recruits come into a a half empty student section or the recruits come into a to a stadium where people are just you know sitting on their hands and not really creating a great environment like you know like you would see at Ohio State or LSU or uh, Michigan, Alabama, like Penn State, like these types of, of teams that have incredible environments and night games, then, um, then, then you know, Oklahoma's missing the, the opportunity here. So I, I know that there's frustration within the fan base, but I think it's it's an opportunity for Oklahoma to, um, you know, showcase, you know, what, you know, potentially they're capable of and, you know, if nothing else for the, for those recruits that are that are in town.